So we're going to exactly. be talking about AI solutions um, that, you know, when you want to be scaling up AI solutions, a lot of modern AI solutions today require huge amounts of compute. You, it would be difficult and usually be much more expensive to try to get this going on your own infrastructure. And so most of the time, we use cloud solutions. So um, let's start off with talking about foundation models in general, which are the bedrock, if you will, with a lowercase b, of being able to build AI solutions for companies. Absolutely. So uh, foundation models, they, we're not going to go into large language models in detail. We did that in episode 747, where we talked a lot about transformers, the technical details of that. Uh, but we will just take it as granted that they are these things called large language models based on transformer architecture. And if you're not familiar with either, and I, we want to make this episode as accessible to everyone as possible, uh, especially we want to educate um, people at like management and executive level because there are lots of technical episodes out there. This one will be more dialed down in the sense that anybody can understand it. So in, in that spirit, if you think of chat GPT, then there's a technology underlying ChatGPT and that empowers it, that makes it work. And that was the first of its kind uh, technology uh, that, uh, well, it was actually developed in 2017 and was rolled out um, for public use, I, I believe it was 2022, right? At the end of 2022, November 2022, ChatGPT yes. uh, came yeah. out. So that's an example of a large language model in action. Uh, it can pro it can do generative AI uh, tasks. Now, what a foundation model is is that kind of large language model, um, or a uh, in more generally a generative AI type of model that is a basis for you to build your own applications. So ChatGPT was the first, but since then there have been many companies that have been operating in the space, uh, such as Anthropic with its Claude models, uh, Meta. Um, previously known as Facebook with its Llama models, uh, Mistral, and many, many other um, companies. And these are large tech companies with lots of funding because to develop these generative AI models, these foundation models, it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of smart people working together. So not every company can come along and just do that. Um, but why, why it's called a foundation model is because you can, once it's developed, once it's pre-trained uh, by one of these companies, if you get access to it, and we'll talk about access later on, but once, once somebody has access to it, you can then use that as a foundation to build your own application. And the way to imagine is, and Adlan and I spent a bit of time yesterday thinking about it like a real life analogy, and we came up with an analogy of a cake. So... Um, <laughs> Side note, funnily enough, the analogy of a cake was recommended to us by ChatGPT. <laughs> so foundation model helped us explain itself. Anyway, so just think of a cake. Um, I've never baked a cake, even though I'm looking forward to it, but I've you know eaten plenty. And you can kind of tell that, uh, especially those like spongy cakes, the, the, the typical cake you see in movies that gets thrown to somebody's face type of thing. Like they have a ba like a foundation or a basis or like a bottom layer, like the, ma the main big layer, the, that spongy, squishy layer. Um, and you can take that layer and then on top of that, you can make it different. You can put your own type of frosting, your own type of sprinkles. You can put strawberries on top. You can put a chocolate on chips on top. You can put, um, I don't know, like kiwis on top. You can make different cakes with the same foundation. And even foundations, there are different ones. Like they might be a vanilla foundation. They might be a chocolate foundation. They might be another foundation. So you take that big um, layer of a foundation. Once you have it, once you like bought it from a shop or somebody gave it to you, then you can create your own cake on top of that, depending on your use case. Maybe your kids love strawberry or your, um, you, know, you were asked to create a chocolate chip cake by somebody else. So that's the way foundation models work. Like this bottom layer is pre-trained and ready done for you by bigger, larger organizations with all the budget and so on. And then you can just rent it or rent a copy of it and uh, adjust and modify it for your own custom needs to uh, apply to your business use case. And that's all it is. So when you hear foundation model, it's nothing super like um, complex, like the model itself is complex, but then once you have it, you can work with it and you can create magical things for your business. Mm -hmm. And I guess a key thing, and you can disagree with me if 
you want to, but I, I, my understanding would be that the relationship between a large language model and a foundation model is that if you imagine a Venn diagram, the foundation model is broader. So mm -hmm. large language models all fit within the idea of foundation models, but in addition, you could have large vision models. Um, you know, you could have machine vision models that only specialize in recognizing, you know, allowing a Waymo car to automatically be able to operate and recognize things. The Waymo car doesn't need to have a large language model in order to be capable, but you could still have, that could be another kind of a foundation model. So it's like a, uh, a generalization. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, you have large language models for text, you have models for images, for videos and so on. So indeed, yeah. and they're all full under foundation model. That's, that's a great addition. Thanks, John.